Hey there, welcome to I Have Today. In this episode, I am speaking to the amazing James Malinchak, who is my coach, my mentor, and my friend. And I just wanted to give this little heads up that we did this interview in a hotel in downtown San Diego, so there's some background noise. So please don't mind the noise and enjoy the show. Thanks so much. Hey there, it's Diane Forster, and welcome to I Have Today, the show that inspires, educates, and empowers you through life's transitions. And each week on this show, I bring on the coolest, most amazing CEOs, authors, experts, and truly life changers who've gone through their own transitions in life and have come out on the other side successful. And this week, I am so honored and privileged to have on my friend, my coach, my mentor, James Malinchak. Hey, Hey, thanks for having me. We've been trying to do this for a while. Yes, we have. (laughs) We've been trying to do this for a really, really long time. But James is in my city, and we came on down to have a little chat. Made Made it work, finally. Yeah, yeah. So what we're going to talk about today is James's story, but we're going to really do focus on um, speaking as a business and how to really make millions telling your story and being a speaker as you've done and you help so many others to do this as, in, in addition to other things. But before I get into your questions, I just want to read a little bit about James. James is recognized as one of the most requested in demand business and motivational keynote speakers and marketing consultants in the world. He was featured on the hit ABC TV show Secret Millionaire and was twice named National College Speaker of the Year. James has delivered over 3,000 presentations for corporations, associations, business groups, colleges, universities, and youth organizations worldwide. James speaks to groups ranging from 20 to 30,000. As a speaker, marketing coach, and consultant for over 20 years, James is the -the behind-the-scenes go-to marketing advisor for many top speakers, authors, thought leaders, business professionals, celebrities, sports coaches, athletes, and entrepreneurs, and is recognized as the world's number one big money speaker, trainer, and coach. He's on a mission to help you do what you love, share your message, and make a difference while getting highly paid. And that's why I work with him. (laughs) So, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. I saw some of your previous guests and you got awesome guests. Oh, thanks. Yeah, well, I'm excited to have you. It just it's it's amazing. So I really wanted to have you on the show to share your story because I've heard your story before Mm -hmm. and it's it's incredible what you're what you're doing and have done. And you know, I really want to offer our audience the opportunity to learn from an expert like you. So well, um, I started off in a small steel mill town in western Pennsylvania. And uh, mom was a lunch mother, serving lunches at the school. Dad was a railroad conductor on the uh, trains, if you will, driving the trains. And so it wasn't like we came from anything. I didn't know anything about speaking. I didn't know anything about business. Um, Went to college, got out of college, and started to get this kind of little bumblebee in my belly, which was like I knew I wanted to do something and make a difference in the lives of folks. Right. And uh, what happened was when I was in high school, a speaker said something at my high school that changed my life and stuck with me for all these years and I thought well wouldn't it be cool to do that and like speak at the time I wanted to speak to kids right and like do that for kids Mm -hmm. like that speaker did for me and so that was sort of my quest to start thinking about speaking but man I was I didn't know what I was doing you know you get this desire to like share a message or a story and speak and then uh, you probably don't have the success right away that you want to have because what you don't realize is there's a flip side to the coin Okay. So on the one side of the coin, you have your message. This was the big turning point for me. You have your message, your story, your how-to advice, and the want to make a difference and help people. And you think if that's all you have, that's all you need. Right. Man, it wasn't until I learned the flip side of the coin that there's actually this thing called the business. Right. And I got to learn how to position the right way, get people to want to book me. You know, uh, what are folks looking for in speeches and topics? And I didn't know any of that stuff. Mm-hmm. And Diane, I was so broke. I was making, I was working in a video store in Southern California, making seven bucks an hour. Wow. Montrose Video, Montrose, California, <laughs> <laughs> making seven dollars an hour, trying to figure out why am I a failure and why did I, you know, why can't I do this and I should quit and give up? And I think a lot of folks oh, yeah. think that I, way. I, I can't tell you how many times I've said that in yeah. my life. Yes. Yeah. And what what you need to realize, and this was the big aha for me, was there's nothing wrong with you. Right. You know, it's the fact that 
you've been led to believe that you only need the one side of the coin. Right. Uh, you need you need both. There's two sides of the coin. Yes. And you got to learn the business side and like how do you get how do you package yourself, brand yourself? How do you get folks to want to pick you as a speaker or a coach? Mm-hmm. Or how do you get folks to want to come to your live event or join your mastermind? Those are all skill sets. Right. You know, and I never knew that starting out, and that's why I was broke, making yeah. seven bucks an hour. Fast forward. Now, over the years, I've done over 3,000 presentations, 2,000 nice. one-on-one consulting sessions, yes. thousands of my own seminars, you know, met awesome people like you and so yes. many other folks that I would never would have met. Mm-hmm. And I will tell you that the secret, that the turning point was when I realized, oh, crap, I'm running a business. Yes. It's just like running a dry cleaning store. You know, dry cleaners can be the best dry cleaners, but if they don't know how to get people to walk in and bring their dry cleaning. Right. Then they're going to be out of business. Out of business, <laughs> right. And the same thing in the speaking world. Yeah. So there's so many amazing folks with great messages that want to help people, want to inspire people, want to change people's lives. And that's so important where we start. But you got to understand there's a flip side to the coin. Yes. And you've got to learn the business side of it. Yes. And, and no one really wants to do that because that's hard. Right. That's work. It is. <laughs> yeah. In fact, you and I talked about this uh, the last time I had a session with you. And... and You know, it's the unattractive side of this business that is so necessary. The commitment it takes, you know, Malcolm Gladwell, 10,000 hours. I mean, it's it's every athlete, the hours and hours, whatever, the pianist, whatever you're doing, if you want to be really good at it and you want to be really successful at it, you got to put in the time and the work. You know, I call it AIC, it's ass in chair. Yes. You got to just sit down and do the work and nobody wants to do that because that's actually work. Right. You know, um, and we just want to believe that everything falls out of the sky and into our lap. Right. You know, and and that's just not the way it works on the, in the real world. One of my favorite quotes of all time was the great boxer Muhammad Ali. Yeah. He said, champions are made in the gym, not the ring. Yeah. The ring's easy. The to show ring. up for the fight the night. Right. But you didn't see the eight months before, 12 hours a day, and, you know, the, the working out, the running up the hills, the, you know, guys that were hitting me that were stronger than me, but the, it made me win when I was in the ring for the belt. Right, right. But he said, I, I became champ in the ring. I'm sorry, in the, in the gym, not the ring. It's kind of the same thing. It's that stuff that we don't want to do because it's work, but that's what separates the winners from the losers. Yes, very good point and and the more you're out there doing that and doing the work the actually the real um, one of the gifts is you can really identify who your market really is anyway by doing that absolutely yes yeah Yeah. so you know uh, I'm about to say something that's gonna be it's kind of be like castor oil okay (laughs) go for it a lot of the younger folks are like what is that (laughs) now i'm dating myself right right. like grandma my mom would like i'm gonna put castor oil in you (laughs) like what so how about how about instead of castor oil bad cough syrup okay Okay. that's good so everyone thinks i that you should start with your message Mm. or your story no i've been teaching this forever you start with a market Yes. And match your story and your message to make sure it matches what the market wants to book and buy. Very, very good piece of advice. Yeah. Start with the market. Always. Because let's say, I'll just use one simple example. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's say you wanted to talk on the law of attraction, but you wanted to get paid to speak for corporations on the law of attraction. Yes. You can put all these marketing materials together. You can have a website. And it's a great topic, right? The problem is corporations cannot bring you. You work for a corporation, right? Oh, yeah. They're not going to bring someone in to talk about that kind of esoteric topic. Right. You have board of directors. You have shareholders. You have uh, people with different religious beliefs, different background. They can't bring that sort of esoteric topic in. Right. It's not politically correct, if you will. Mm-hmm. Now, a public event, if it's your own event, you can talk on anything you want. It could be the topic of the whole event. But... If you don't understand what that market wants, if you're going to go after that market, in this case, the fee-paid corporate market, if you start with your message, then you're going to never get booked. Mm -hmm. 
But if you look at what that market wants and you match it in a way that they want to book it, then you get booked. Right. Jack Canfield is a prime example. Yes. When he goes for corporate talks, he does not go after the law of attraction. Right. He does the success yes, principles, principles. And one of the principles is not law of attraction. It's like attracts like. Right. Because right. that's more applicable to the corporate market. So that's, yeah. that's just an example of making sure you know what the market wants when you pursue trying to get speeches. Yes. Yes. So. So, secret millionaire. Yo. Yeah. <laughs> That's impressive. Yeah, it was yeah. a blessing. Yeah. 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 I, was, I love that story. Uh, your old company. That's my old, <laughs> my old stomping grass. Yeah. I sold spots for secret millionaire. We didn't even know each other. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> I know. It's so great. Oh, my God. Secret millionaire was so awesome. Um, for those of you who don't know, I was um, put into an impoverished neighborhood where I had to have no money. I lived on $44.66 for an entire week. I had no money, no credit card. I wasn't allowed to take credit card, cell phone, no amazing. contact with the outside world. Yeah. And I had to look for amazing, beautiful people who were making a contribution in their community. And at the time, um, I volunteered, and they didn't know who I was. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of my time there, which is about eight days roughly, I think, later, I went to them and said, hey, there's something I haven't told you. I'm leaving town, and I have something I haven't told you. And they're like, whoa, what's what this? Is it? Whoa, it was like really this dramatic pause. And uh, they were like, uh-oh, what's this cat up to? And I had to tell them my identity. And then I opened up my checkbook and start writing them checks to further their amazing mission. Yeah. That's the whole Secret Millionaire uh, premise. It was amazing. Oh, it was gosh. an amazing series. Yeah. I got way more out of what... Uh, what I learned from them, yes. then I think they got out of the money that I wrote for the checks. Yes. I learned like what real sacrifice is and giving and, and these folks just gave just to give, to help. And yeah. they didn't know we were ABC and right. filming right. a TV right. show. They just thought we were just doing some documentary thing on giving. So they were just giving and they were just, they were in their normal selves, just giving and being good people to other people. All right, so if someone is out there uh, wanting to speak, wanting to, you know, make money at it, uh, me included, that's why I work with you, um, what uh, couple of pieces of advice could you give them to, you know, facilitate this for them? Yeah, the very first thing is you have to decide, do you want to be sort of what's called a keynote speaker, which is like an hour, like I just did in here for this group yes. here in San Diego? Or do you want to be a workshop leader? Because you will position and package yourself differently based on which route you choose. Right. Okay? So that's the first thing to consider. The second thing is um, if you want to be a fee-paid speaker, then you got to say, well, which market do you want to go after? And you've got to look to find out what the people who have the budgets are paying for. And you have to take your topic and match what they want to book. Right. Not what you think they need. Yes. I love talking on this, this, and that. It doesn't matter if they don't want to book it. Right. Prime example. There was a guy named Jerry in one of my boot camps, super awesome guy. And he said, I'm going to talk on the topic of creativity. And I want to do fee paid speaking. And I said, well, Jerry, that's great. No one's ever going to book you. Yeah. And he said, but you don't understand. I see all these books in the bookstore on creativity. I said, Jerry, with all due respect, you don't understand. You're talking about apples. I'm talking about cantaloupes. Right. You're talking about books in a bookstore. Yes. I'm talking about topics that they book. Mm -hmm. And specifically, he wanted to get fee-paid talks for corporations. And I said, they don't book the topic of creativity. Right. You're going to take all of your materials and your website and do this whole thing up and write a book on creativity, and no one's going to book you. Right. And he got all down in the dumps. I said, but watch this, Jerry. If I take what you're passionate about, creativity, and I repackage you as how to be a creative leader, yes. you're still going to talk on creativity. You're just going to throw the word leader around, yes. and we're going to have the word leader in your marketing material, so you're going to be looked at as a leadership speaker because they book that all the time, Right. but you're going to talk on creativity when you show up. Yeah. And he went through the roof getting bookings. Yes. So that's a prime example. You always start with, you got to learn what the market's booking. If I wanted to speak for truck drivers tomorrow, I would go find out what topics do they book for truck drivers. Yes. And then I have to take what I'm passionate about and package it in a way that they say, ah, this would be a perfect topic for my truck drivers. Right, right. So that's the real big key. First, keynoter or workshop trainer. Second, 
find out who you want to go after and what do they already say yes to package your stuff to match that yes that's yes. the really that's what I call the big money speaker way that is yeah. and and you want to be out there getting your message out you yeah. want to be speaking and and educating and inspiring these people well, so for fees for, right for fees <laughs> this is what I'm saying yeah. like you want to be this is a business you need to be making money at this you know I watch you know some of these folks that teach speaker courses online and they're teaching everybody how to speak for free and I'm like well that's stupid Right. You're going to tell somebody to fly across country to do a free talk for an hour. They pay their own expenses and all that. They can't even make an offer. Right. And then fly back? Yes. Like, to speak for free? Like, come on. Yeah. Your stuff's too valuable to give it away. It, it's true. And I've done that in the, at the beginning. That was okay, getting my feet wet, but and Then not it gets anymore. old after a while. Not anymore. <laughs> no way. I'm not no. doing that. So. And I believe you either speak for a fee or so you can speak and then offer your stuff so people can work with you further. Yes. Other than that... Yeah. You can't just keep running around talking for free unless you're getting something back. Right. So yes. it's a little yep, different. We talk I'm, about that. I'm a little harsh and a little different, but I, I just don't believe in but BSing folks. But you know, it's made you successful, and look at all the lives you're helping by doing this. I feel very blessed. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm so grateful for it. Um, all right, so I want to ask you a question I ask all my guests. Oh, boy. The heat. I'm sweating. I got these big bright lights. <laughs> yeah, this is such a <laughs> challenging show. No, um, how do you live the I have today way, which is intentionally in the present moment? That's a great question, and um, it's what I was just talking to this group in here of insurance agents uh, about. You know, when my sister Vicki passed away, a lot of people don't know this, I have a sister that passed away of a brain tumor several years ago. And it taught me a very valuable lesson at a young age that life is about that long. Yes. You know, life is just too dang short to moan, complain, not do what you want to do right now. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll get to it. I call it the someday syndrome. Yes. Someday, like when the kids get out of the house, then I'll do it. Yeah. You know, or someday when this happens, then yeah. I'll do it. Yeah, and I then, call it the when-then syndrome. Oh, the when-then? Yeah, when, I, when that happens, then I'll do that. Ah, I love that. Yeah. And then what you realize is one day on the way to your grave, you forgot to actually live. Yes. <laughs> right? And it's so, it's so fleeting. It goes so quickly. Yeah. And I just, you know, when Vicki passed away, it changed my whole life. I went through a terrible funk and was upset at the world and God. And, you know, how do you take somebody so nice and take their life away? And you got people out there doing bad stuff to others who are still living. Yeah, I went through all this, yeah. this stuff. And... And then I just um, realized one day that I got to be grateful for the 38 years I had her. Mm -hmm. And the thing that, so that was the first thing. It taught me gratefulness for what you have, right? right. Second thing it taught me was that, and I got to live here right now in this moment because you're not guaranteed the next moment. Right. I always say in my talks, as well as telling the insurance agent folks, is no one's guaranteed tomorrow morning. Right. None of us here are guaranteed tomorrow morning. I say that all the time. You know, 151,000 people didn't wake up today. But I was just, we did. I didn't know that number. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, that's what I was just, that's so weird. I yeah. was just telling them, I said, think about this. There are people all over the United States of America, all over the world, who didn't have this privilege today right. of opening our eyes. Right. Well, now you know the number. Yeah, that's 151,000. 151,600 wow. is the exact number. You yeah. know, and it's an old Zig Ziglar line from years ago. You know, every day above ground is a good day. Yeah. And as funny as that sounds, man, it's just, so for me, every day I wake up, yeah, do I go through tough times? Do I? Have, but I don't allow myself to stay in that funk anymore. Right, right. Because I'm like, man, I woke up. Yes. Like, that's yeah. cool. That's great. Okay, so the internet doesn't work at the hotel. Who cares? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> right, dude, people didn't wake up today. Yeah. And so I just always remember that. You know, I, w yeah. what I really remember is Vicky didn't wake up today. Yeah. You know, and so I did. Yeah. And so, well, what would Vicky give to uh, be here, you know? Yeah. And, and any of those 151,000 that didn't wake up today. Mm -hmm. And that's how, you know, I, I live today, I live in the present moment. You know, it's because it's just, you're not guaranteed right. the next moment, let alone tomorrow. Yes. And I just never forget. I don't know if it works for anyone watching, but it works for me and, yeah. you know, it keeps me excited and, and present and um, grateful. Mm -hmm. yeah. So okay. that's how I do it. So is there any final tip or words you'd like to say or yeah. and or anything you'd like to share with the yeah. viewers? Yeah. So 
you know, the, the more I'm in what we do yes. and the older that I get, the more I realize that you can do whatever you want to do. You really can. And there are only two things that ever stop us from that. that. One is yourself. Yes. Right? Your old story that you're telling yourself, whatever that junk might be. We all have. I have it. You have it. Everybody's yep. got it. Right? Yeah. The difference is you can choose to tell a different story and get rid of that crap. Okay? Or you can choose to let that programming keep running again and again and again and do nothing about it. And by the way, doing nothing about it is a decision. Right. I totally agree. 100%. And I say, uh, the, I was just telling the group in here, first part of all transformation is awareness. Once you're aware that you're doing something, you can transform. Right. And so, therefore, if you choose to do nothing about it once you're aware of it, you actually made a decision. Right. So you can't blame other folks. Right. Right? So the first part is you, you're the only person that stops yourself. And the second is other people who stop you that you choose to listen to. So someone says something to you. Well, so what? Right. Let them say whatever they want. And yes. then go do what you want to do anyway and succeed. Yes, yeah. <laughs> right? right? And then yeah. the last thing I would say is, I, and go like this, Diane. I don't think I've ever done this to you before. Go like this. Yeah, all the knowledge is out there to be successful. Ah. You just got to go grab it <laughs> and, like, use it. Yes. I mean, it, yeah. everybody has figured everything out that we want to do. There's somebody out there yes. who's already figured out. You figured things out. I can listen to you. I figured things out. You can listen to me. You just got to go grab the information and God darn it, get off your butt and use the stuff. Yes. So, yeah. So there you go. Man, I love that. You shouldn't ask yeah. that question. Yeah. Then I went off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's good. I mean, sometimes you need to be in, it, you know, you got it. People have to get in your face sometimes. You just have to because you need a good kick in the pants sometimes. Well, it's that cough syrup I said earlier, castor yeah. oil. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, yeah. I always say, you know, maybe I delivered a little bit of sour tasting cough syrup. But it doesn't taste good going down, but I know that once in your belly, you'll be better. Yes. It's yeah. like when mom or grandma gave you the, the castor oil or the cough syrup. Like, oh, I don't want to put it in. Oh, but it's awful. But once it's in, you're yeah. gonna, it's going to heal you and feel better. Yeah. Sometimes things that. don't taste good, but they're good for you. Yeah. <laughs> love it. I love it. Okay, so how can people find out more about you? Oh, real simple. www.bigmoneyspeaker.com. Big, B-I-G, money, M-O-N-E-Y, speaker, S-P-E-A-K-E-R.com. Bigmoneyspeaker.com. Yes, so go check out his site. Or find me on Facebook and yes. all that other stuff. Yeah, he's, he's <laughs> all over social media, and I'm, I'm a, obviously a huge fan. I'm a client, and uh, I've learned so much from you, and will continue to. So awesome. I appreciate you being here. Oh, absolutely. Thanks yeah, for having me on my, the great show. My, Woo. my pleasure. <laughs> all right, so for us, what I'd like to offer you, you know, so while well, James teaches the business of speaking and takes you teaches you really how to make money I want to help you with the mindset piece of it so we have a, a free offer it's a money manifestation mantra that is available for free at our website at dianeforster.com so just go on there and get it in under five minutes a day to start rewiring that those limiting beliefs and help you to move forward to be getting your message and your your uh, your story out to the world and make get paid to do it as well so that's at dianeforster.com and that's it for this week's episode of i have today thanks so much for being here take care bye-bye bye everybody